years before he is destined to take a giant stride into history, Colonel John H. Glenn Jr. squeezes into his spacesuit. His smiling face belies the 10 postponements of his flight that have kept him grounded. This morning, the weather over Cape Canaveral and in the pickup areas is better, and there's an air of optimism as the Colonel walks to the gantry elevator. Carrying his now familiar portable air conditioner, Glenn prepares to go to the 11th deck as clocks point to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The skies are beginning to lighten, and a cool north wind rustles across the Cape. Colonel's date with destiny comes 10 months after the Russians claimed an orbital flight by Yuri Gagarin, and less than a year after Alan Shepard blazed a suborbital trail for the U.S. This is the climax of three years of training. This is the moment when the eyes of the world turn to Cape Canaveral. The Russian orbits were in a thick fog of secrecy. The United States stands or falls in the white-hot glare of worldwide publicity. In the capsule atop the Atlas missile, the Colonel will be strapped to a contoured couch. Once in flight, the Mercury will be tilted so that the astronaut will ride backwards. The seconds tick off as his rendezvous with space approaches. The hatch cover causes a slight delay when a defective bolt is discovered. Then, millions are moved to silent prayer. Takeoff of the Atlas, blasted off by 360,000 pounds of thrust, carries the Mercury gracefully skyward. The Friendship 7, climbing rapidly out of the Earth's atmosphere, exerts a pressure of six times the force of gravity on the astronaut. Loud and clear, he reports back to Mercury Control, reading off his instruments, commenting on his reactions, all as coolly and calmly as if he was commuting on the 827. Glenn is able to control the yaw and pitch of the vehicle himself. Now comes the moment when the Mercury is turned so that Glenn will be seated facing backwards. He checks with ground control. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Capsule is turning around. Oh, that view is tremendous. Roger, turn around has started. Capsule turning around, and I could see the booster doing turn around just a couple of hundred yards behind me. It was beautiful. Uh, Roger, seven, you have a go, at least seven orbits. Roger, understand, go for at least seven orbits. Actual pictures of Glenn in the capsule will give scientists the opportunity to study his reactions as he passes over the Canary Islands, Africa, the Indian Ocean, Australia, back across the Pacific and over the United States. He speeds at 17,500 miles an hour, reaching a high point of 160 miles and a low altitude of 99 miles. Each of the three orbits takes about 90 minutes. Three times the Colonel sees the sun rise within a period of four hours and 56 minutes three times around the globe for a trip of 81,000 miles before he re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, a shield protecting the astronaut from the intense heat. The carrier Randolph is the command ship in the pickup area, but Glenn, instructed not to jettison his retrol rockets, lands short of the carrier. Ground instruments indicated his heat shield was loose, and he was instructed to hold onto his rocket bank to help hold the shield in place. Right at hand, however, is the destroyer Noah, and she speeds to the capsule to take the vehicle and pilot aboard. Despite a few shaky moments among ground control personnel, Glenn is down, hale and hearty. With support cables attached, a pincer-like crane will lift the Friendship 7 aboard. End of a saga. The now famous Friendship 7 is safely lashed to the deck of the destroyer and the crew prepares to help Glenn from the capsule. First, they attempt to help the Colonel from his complex prison through the upper exit in the mouth. They encounter difficulties and so it is decided to blow off the escape hatch cover. First glimpse of the conquering hero, Colonel John H. Glenn 
He left his footprints among the stars. He has a grin as wide as the path he blazed as he rests briefly before being flown to the carrier Randolph by helicopter. He is lifted aboard in a maneuver that looks more dangerous than the flight itself. takes him to the Randolph for a debriefing and examinations by medical men. The copter no sooner touches down on deck than Glenn gets a preview of the congratulations that are still to come. On every hand there is jubilation, on every side smiles and cheers. He signs over his precious log and instruments to the National Space Administration. From here he goes to Grand Turk Island for further rest before the deluge. A deluge of honors a proud country waits to bestow on a brave man. Thank you.